Oh, you know that moment. The obvious realization of something that eventually comes to you. That aha instant when a certain math formula for the first time makes sense. Or when you've been struggling to get the punchline to a joke and it finally hits you. For me, that joke was two parrots were sitting on a perch. One of them said, what's that smell? Or that moment might come when you suddenly realize why someone holds a certain view. Because you made the effort to look at a situation through their eyes and circumstances instead of through just your own. It's a wonderful thing, that moment when we get it. So imagine how Cleopas and his unnamed companion felt when Jesus was finally revealed to them after they'd spent the entire day with him walking and talking together. Perhaps their grief was preoccupying them when they met that stranger on the road, so much so that they didn't bother looking into his eyes or examining his face or his movements as they walked together. Focusing on their own needs, perhaps they didn't see Jesus' need to be seen. In a sense, this happens to us all the time. Did you ever run into someone you know, but in different surroundings than you usually see them? Often, that person seems familiar, but you just can't come up with a name or remember how you know them. My answer is often, I didn't recognize you without your building around you. Like Cleopas and his friend, something familiar needs to jar our senses to the truth of the moment. When things are different, we often need the familiar to wake us up. And boy, are things unfamiliar right now. For most of us, daily routines and schedules have been completely abandoned. Some of us now sheltering in place who normally go to school or work most days each week are having trouble remembering what day it is. Simple things like getting groceries has become a complicated and risk-fraught process. For others for whom long, uninteresting days and staying in one place has been our norm, we've been denied the comfort of visitors and the pleasure simple human touching like hugs can bring. We need the familiar. It grounds and stabilizes us. We function better when things are as they should be. We can accomplish more when basic everyday things aren't a struggle. And physical connection enhances our lives in more ways than we formerly realized. So it's no wonder those disciples and we have been shaken up. For them, as far as they knew, their beloved leader, their hope was dead. For us, our normal has been taken from us, and we don't know when or if it will return. Some of us are suffering even greater loss. A loved one has died. Hope is dwindling or has gone away entirely. When Jesus blessed and broke the bread at the end of that long day together, a familiar ritual all three had engaged in just days before, it awakened the sight of those two disciples, and they realized that their loved one, who was dead, had found new life. And as we gather for worship each Sunday, even while now in a different way, this familiar ritual at Christ's table calls us to remember. To remember who Jesus is. To remember who we are and to realize whose we are. It reminds us of Jesus' new life, both of something more beyond the grave, but also as a way to live differently now, to see the hope and promise that Christ's resurrection brings to us, something to brighten even our darkest days. This meal connects us to one another, despite the disparities of the homes in which we celebrate this holy feast, or the quality of our individual attire, or even the internet speeds of our various households. Here again, a portion of today's scripture from Luke. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, 
and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. As Luke tells us in this passage, Jesus didn't stick around long enough to offer wine this time. He'd already accomplished his purpose that evening. But on the last evening he spent with his disciples in his earthly form, after blessing and breaking the bread, Matthew tells us he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Please pray with me. Creator God, we come seeking you in these unfamiliar times. Many of us are grieving. We have lost loved ones. We long for a return to normal. And yet, we are grateful for the new life and teachings of your Son, Jesus. We find hope in his resurrection and for what his new life means to us when we face dark days and uncertain times. We ask your forgiveness when we have failed to see or to make the effort to consider or to understand the suffering of others. Keep us, Lord, from becoming preoccupied with our own needs and emotions. Forgive us when we diminish those for whom everyday things are a struggle. Help us to really see one another, to look into each other's eyes, to study another's face, to hear beyond the words being said to us. Finally, we ask that your Holy Spirit empower us to become your love at work in the world as we respond with clearer vision and renewing hope. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen.